Hey guys, it's Lindsay here. Um, a lot of you have requested, I put a poll up asking if you wanted to hear my pregnancy journey and you all said yes, most of you did. And as a online nutrition coach and lifestyle coach, I wanted to document my pregnancy journey, not only to you know help educate, inspire, motivate you know future mamas out there or women who are currently pregnant or you know just looking to get pregnant in the future, but also just to remember this for myself because you forget about it. And a lot of the times people are like, man, I just don't remember what happened, um, you know, what I experienced. And I wanted to record this to explain and just kind of remind myself to have and maybe share with Sage here in the future of my pregnancy journey with her during this time. So we're going to rewind a little bit. I'm going to explain to you kind of what happened as far as like a backstory in regards to me getting pregnant because, you know, that is how it all gets started, you know? You find out on a pregnancy test that you're pregnant. And you guys probably know how that happens. So grab a drink. We're hanging in there for the long haul because I've got about five pages of notes that I had written down. Um, so I'll be looking at that just because I really wanted to make sure that I gave as much detail, as much transparency with you guys and also with myself here in this video. So rolling back to 2019, whoa, um, we did have our first pregnancy. I found out that I was pregnant in July and um, we had a miscarriage. So um, prior to that, um, we did go in for an eight week ultrasound, which was technically I thought it was 10 weeks. And then we had um, shown that it was only around like six weeks on the ultrasound. So the doctor said, you know, you have the option to um, come back in a couple weeks and see if there's progress or, um, you know, we can just go ahead and move forward with, um, you know, the miscarriage um, side of things. So we wanted to wait, so we scheduled another appointment, we came back in two weeks and there was no progress. So therefore that means that the egg just did not produce, it did not continue to grow. Um, what happened, I don't know. Um, but again, people are like, oh, you're healthy. It's like, you know, you have no big deal, no worry. And, <laughs> and my daughter's crying right now. Um, and so, Okay, and we're back. I had to uh, feed the crying child. So, she's been on one, let me just tell you. But, so, um, we found out that it did not um, end up growing. So, therefore, we proceeded um, to help my body then realize that it needed to miscarry. So, that gave us the option for the self um, at home option or the DNC, which is going to the hospital. So, we um, opted for the at home version. So, it is taking a small little pill called Cytotec, um, inserting it into your cervix and then causing contractions, and therefore you um, start to um, have the baby and miscarry essentially. Um, I learned my pain tolerance really quick. And that actually ended up putting me in the ER. I then um, opted to have a DNC done. And so that allowed us to kind of clean everything out so we could start over. Um, so that happened in October or September. Um, September. So I didn't have a cycle for October, November. Um, I finally, I wanted to, you know, diet just as anyone. Um, and, but I, I knew I couldn't, I knew I had to maintain my fat intake. I knew I had to maintain high calories and also my stress levels so that I could reproduce a period. Um, so that we could then start trying again. So not having two cycles for, um, two months, I then had one in January and February. So, um, January happened and, um, you know, we tried, nothing happened. And then come February, um, we had a lovely surprise. So that kind of, um, takes you from the beginning of the journey to, you know, 
Sage being here and being in my womb. And, you know, I wouldn't be here without my biggest supporter, um, without Anthony. He has literally been my rock through this entire experience. I seriously don't know what I would do without him. He, um, it's just been a great ride and I wouldn't trade anything for the world. He is just, he's amazing. So, um, you know, I know that we were supposed to go through that in our past. It wasn't our time. And so it is our time now and Sage is our beautiful, um, baby girl that we have so I'm also going to break this down into trimesters so trimester one two and three um, I'm going to share my health stats emotions signs symptoms that I've experienced um, and any other random details that have been going on in our life um, just so that we can um, document that so first trimester that is going to be from conception to week 12 so um, that started um, when I was out on a work trip. Um, I enjoyed drinks, food, um, I worked out in the hotel, and we just kind of, you know, did our thing. I also knew that I had a period coming up that week, during that week, so I was kind of already curious to know if it was going to show up or not. I was super, super worried, paranoid. I packed um, a few pregnancy tests and took them while I was gone at the trip. Um, they said negative, so that kind of sucked. So if you are kind of planning your pregnancy, so don't get too worked up and don't think about, you know, maybe taking a test too soon because it may not yield the results that you're wanting to see. However, um, on January 31st, I popped positive. So I came home, I had a couple days off. I knew it was um, five days past my missed period. So I then did take a pregnancy test and it was positive. Now I didn't do anything cute or exciting as far as sharing with Anthony about the great news. I immediately told him and we were just elated. So it was awesome, it was great. Um, and it finally began all over again. So the biggest thing that I dealt with this part of pregnancy, so week one through 12, is the fact that, you know, you are at a higher risk for a miscarriage again. So I had previously already had one and I was super nervous that it was going to happen again. I mean, who wouldn't be? So I made sure that I did everything that I could to maintain a healthy pregnancy from the get go. I mean, even before you get pregnant, you should go ahead and do everything possible to be as, you know, healthy as possible as you can to make sure that you are producing everything that your body needs to make a human. So I made sure um, I continued taking my prenatal vitamin. I did start taking a collagen supplement and also aloe vera. Um, I also uh, made sure I was taking a probiotic as well too. Um, I also made sure to continue my food intake and macro tracking and exercising because my body was already used to it. I wanted to make sure that I didn't gain an astronomical amount of weight. I wanted to kind of use this as a tool, as a guide, and also just, you know, numbers. I love numbers and it's going to make it easy to, you know, bounce back essentially post baby. So, um, you know, I want to make clear that um, not all women have to do this. You don't, not everyone has to track their food. Not everyone has to, you know, take these supplements, although I do recommend them if you are pregnant, but don't do something that is way too extreme or try to, you know, lose a ton of weight in the beginning of your pregnancy because, you know, that's just going to shock your body and your body's going to, you know, have to figure out what it's trying to do. Is it trying to lose weight or is it trying to make a human? So um, just kind of keep that in mind. If you are a lifter already, if you already have like an exercise routine, then continue that. But don't try to go run a marathon when you find out that you're just pregnant. So that's gonna, again, put your body in shock. So always talk to your doctor. Um, I continue to track macros at my maintenance phase, which means I'm planning on not gaining or losing any weight. Um, so that is going to be at 1900 calories per day. So that was my maintenance time at, at the beginning of my pregnancy. Um, I did start my pregnancy at 130 pounds. Um, they did advise me to only gain about uh, 25 to 30 pounds during my pregnancy because of my BMI, which is kind of bogus. Um, <laughs> just kind of keep that in mind as well too. Um, but I also maintained a workout schedule of five days a week. 
Um, I wanted to monitor my heart rate, so I kind of uh, kept my Fitbit watch on and try to stay around 140 beats per minute. Um, and I didn't really change anything drastically in the first trimester um, as far as working out. Now everyone's going to have different signs or symptoms. It's going to make you tired, make you nauseous. Some days I threw up in the bathroom in the gym, um, but I just continued working out afterwards. And some days I uh, would start my workout and then I would go home because I just, I didn't feel good. I was tired and that's just kind of what happened. But I tried to stay consistent for that as well too. Um, now the ladies get real sensitive in the beginning. So you might see a large, um, change in those. So I certainly did. And they were super, super sensitive. So I did, um, neglect anything that was chest supported, um, as far as exercises goes to, um, help alleviate that pain and pressure on my chest. Um, as far as foods and symptoms that I did experience, chicken was just not ideal. I didn't like chicken um, in protein powders. I just could not stomach protein powders or oatmeal. Um, those were kind of things that would irritate me. I didn't have any like smells or weird cravings. Um, I did get a, um, a skin tag on my armpit. So that is a sign um, of pregnancy or a symptom that you can get. Um, some people get them. And then I also started to form a varicose vein on my right calf. So I had that as well too. Um, in the beginning, I also did not like coffee, which was very sad, very sad. Um, I went two weeks without coffee. Um, I like kind of threw it up in the shower one morning after having it and I was like, okay, I thought I was gonna have to deal with that the entire pregnancy, but thank the Lord, it was only for two weeks. So I did have a cup of coffee. Moving forward from uh, about week, eight to um you know moving forward that i did have coffee um i did have evening sickness i didn't really get sick in the morning at all um but around like six or seven o'clock i noticed that i would start to get sick so that's kind of like when that happened so i also wanted to make sure that my workouts were in the morning because i knew at night i was not feeling well so i knew i wouldn't want to work out then um some other things that I did, I wanted to um, make sure I didn't get inside a hot bath, so I didn't take any hot baths, which sucked um, because I love my hot water. I love it to be scalding hot and taking a bath. Um, I also focused on high quality foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, protein that I could. I tried my best um, and also slept when I needed. I made sure I got enough sleep during the time. Um, a couple other fun things that kind of happened during the first trimester was um, we traveled to Kentucky, we went to the Bourbon Trail, um, which I did miss out on tasting because I was pregnant, but it was a really good reason and we still had a lot of fun. Um, I also turned 25 during this trimester, so we had my birthday and COVID hit. So um, this also means that Anthony could no longer go to any appointments with me. Um, masks were mandated, temperatures were required, and he could only go to anything that was ultrasound related um but if it was no ultrasound he couldn't go and he couldn't even sit in the waiting room so um that was just kind of the policy that they had and even when there was a um, ultrasound he then had to leave immediately after so he couldn't even sit in with the doctor's section of the appointment with me so that was kind of sad and um, you know, anyone that did or is going through that right now, I just, I, my heart goes out to you because, you know, or those who kind of had to deal with that early on, it was just um, very unfortunate. So, um, we did end up taking a at home, uh, gender reveal. So we used sneak peek for that. Um, I did take that at 12 weeks, um, which ends the trimester one. And I sent that off to find out what we were having. Um, the end of my first trimester, so week 1 through 12, I went from 130 pounds to 133.6 pounds. Let's drink. Second trimester. So the second trimester, COVID happened, gym shut down. I then started doing at home workouts. So I wanted to make sure again, heart rate. Um, I shared everything on Facebook as far as workouts. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I actually, I enjoyed getting creative and 
Uh, with my workouts and nutrition to stay up with things, I continue drinking about a half a gallon of water a day um, towards a gallon. Um, I don't think I ever really reached a gallon. It's a little bit difficult for me, but if you certainly can, I do highly suggest doing a gallon of water a day. Um, that's going to not only hydrate your skin, help with um, you know stretch marks, help growing your baby as well too, um, and just keep you nourished and hydrated. So definitely, definitely recommend that. So. Um, I knew that, you know, I didn't want not having a gym being a, a factor for me or an excuse because I know that, you know, when the baby got here that, you know, I may not be able to go to the gym. I may have to do at home workouts. So why not start now? Why not start, um, you know, utilizing things and finding stuff to build my home gym? So um, I did steer clear of any exercises that required stomach pressure at this point. So anything lying on my belly, anything like on the floor, uh, anything that was like major um, like front supported. Um, and I also did kind of monitor my hip thrust at this point. So instead of putting it directly kind of like on my pelvic area, um, it was kind of more on my thighs just so I could adjust that as well too. Um, and I did continue going to the chiropractor, so I also did continue that starting from um, week one until week 37. Um, so that was something that I did as well too. As far as nutrition goes, uh, my nutrition that month, I did increase by around 200 calories, which bumped me up to around 2,100 calories a day. Um, some days it was tough to kind of hit that because I wasn't really hungry, um, but I just kind of listened to my body. So some days I was kind of up, some days I was lower, but I did make sure that I tracked 90% of the time. There were some times that I did track or, um, but I always tracked every day, but there might've been something that I wasn't like 100% accurate on. Um, so our friends did have a garage gym, so bless their souls for letting us to use that from time to time. However, there was kind of like an auto body shop inside that garage too. So whenever there were a lot of fumes going on, we just, we left and we went home and I just did an at home workout. But on days that it wasn't, you know, strongly um, fumey in there, um, we did get a workout, which is great. Um, I also did continue to take the supplements, again, still collagen, prenatal, probiotic, aloe vera. Um, stretch marks can be a big factor, so it can be um, genetics as well too. So I did ask my mom if she did get stretch marks during her pregnancy, and she said that she did not, but she did get those varicose veins. So that is what I developed. Um, I had not had any stretch marks so far. Again, I do think that those supplements can help you hydration um, and then also that lovely belly butter that they have I did use um, cocoa butter on my belly I put that on every day to help moisturize the skin down there um, you know it's also just a reminder though that any mark that you do get on your body it's just a process of you creating this beautiful human this beautiful soul um, so don't you know don't harp on yourself if you have them or um you know if something happened during your pregnancy that you know it's just a change and that's it's kind of like your battle scars that you have and and your mark that you know you did this you are a strong mama you're a strong woman and it's just part of the process so some other sometimes that i experienced um, meats were still not my thing, so hitting my protein was still the toughest thing. Um, I made sure I would try to get around 100 grams of protein a day. Um, some people it's difficult, some people it's really easy. Um, I'd say my energy was really back up. Um, I no longer threw up at night, so that kind of night sickness, was it went away. Um, again, I still didn't have any weird cravings so far. Um, we did go to Sonic quite a bit. I did grow up on cookie dough and ice cream, so that was kind of the thing that I wanted to, you know, kind of incorporate now that I had some higher calories, let's be real, and so that I could have that in my macro. So we did go get that around probably more than I should have, about two to three times a week um, for that. So we also be, I also began um, shopping for maternity clothes. I did use a site called Boohoo, 
B-O-O-H-O-O -O -O, for maternity clothes. Um, they're over in like Europe, Europe. they're European sizes, um, but I highly recommend them if you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on maternity clothes, but want something that's cute and stylish, I do highly recommend them. Um, we also had to go shopping for some new bathing suits because we had our um, yearly 4th of July trip to Charleston, South Carolina. So I also wanted to find some suits that made me feel comfortable, um, you know, with my added weight gain at this point and just kind of how my body looked and my belly and how everything fit. So I did um, do that because, you know, being in the fitness industry, you do have extra pressure from, you know, the outside and what people think of you and how you dress and how you feel about yourself and your expectations, especially as a fitness coach. Um, you know, you just kind of hold yourself a little bit um, more harder during this time as well. Um, so I just made sure that I reminded myself, gave myself daily affirmations that I was making this beautiful human and it was just part of the process. So um, it wasn't going to be forever. So May 2nd, we found out that um, we were having a little girl and I was so sold on having a boy. I, the Chinese calendar, the old wives tales, the signs, symptoms, all that fun stuff, it just kind of lined up for boy. And we found out that we were having a girl and it was time to get started on buying all the pink and glitter for her. And we went to bed that night with the name Sage Evelyn Whittle. It was perfect. So still, Anthony couldn't go to any appointments. Um, we did have our actual gender anatomy scan, um, which he did get to go to that. So we did um, confirm that we were having a girl, which was great. And that was at week 20. No, they did that at week 19 for us. Um, typically, it's like week 19 to 21 is when they do their gender um, scan. So they did that and we did confirm that we were having a girl. So that was great. It was a blessing and she was nice and healthy. Um, she was measuring right on track and it was a great experience um, for that as well too. Um, we also were planning three baby showers during this time because of COVID and restrictions on where you can have stuff, how many people. Um, so we wanted to break up and have as many people come as possible, um, but still allowing people the choice and opportunity to come or not come so we did have some people that were not able to come um due to their reasons and you know we completely supported them and um you know just thank them because they still showed us love and appreciation and support and so we we're just really grateful for everyone in our lives during that part um so we did celebrate our one year wedding anniversary during this trimester as well too. And I did start a new job. Um, in addition to, um, you know, being a lifestyle fitness coach, I do have a full time day job as well too. So it does kind of keep me busy as well. Um, I was, you know, it was a great decision. Um, you know, always transitioning into a new position as a pregnant woman. Um, there are kind of those concerns, but it was it was an amazing decision and I love the company that I work for right now. Um, and, you know, they're allowing me to be here to, you know, record this and um, share with you guys my story here. So we also finalize on our new home. So we are in the process of building a new home as well too. So we signed papers for that, picked out our colors, and started the process of building as well too. The end of the trimester two, I did weigh 145. So I started out at 130 and I am now up 15 pounds um, by week 27. Third trimester. So this is going to be week 27 through week 40. So this pregnancy literally flew by. It was insane. Um, I I'm going to show you guys a, a video of all of my pictures that I took as far as belly progress updates here at the end of the video, but it was, you know, we sold our home, we moved into a rental, preparing for birth, um, we're going to be um, then having baby and then moving into another rental and then our forever home. So a lot's going on and it was, you know, just kind of worth it to, um, to just to just do everything and it's just it's great um 
you know, gyms were officially open by now. Um, they had a mask uh, rule, so you had to wear a mask when you enter the gym, um, not necessarily while you're working out, but um, in like the locker room and bathroom and make sure you wipe everything down, which is kind of, you know, smart and standard wipe it down anyways. Um, so up until about 35 weeks, I um, had the same lifting schedule. I worked out at 6 a.m. and then I would get ready for work and go to work. And then um, I did start my workouts kind of more like full body focus, so anterior, posterior, and then a um, volume day for arms and shoulders. So I made sure it's kind of like more of a full body effect. Um, I also did walk on the treadmill about 10 to 20 minutes um, during each workout to make sure that I, I was just getting enough steps because I do have a kind of more sedentary job um, during the day as well too. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I did keep up with my 8,000 to 10,000 steps a day. Um, some days it, I hit it, some days I didn't. Um, I just kind of tried to, you know, overall um, achieve that goal. So for nutrition, I still continue to track my meals. Um, I still kind of aimed around the 2100 to 2200 calories per day, just upping it a little. Again, you don't have to eat for two. You don't have to eat for two. That is not what this is. Can you think about like a tiny itty bitty thing this big and you're trying to eat double the amount of calories that you eat? This, this little bean doesn't need that much and this little human doesn't need that much even by the time that you are 27 or 30 weeks or even 40 weeks. Like that person's stomach is this big. It's like the size of a dime and it continues to grow. So you don't need to eat for two because that's just going to pack on the pounds on you, mama. So don't do that. Um, so since we're in a rental now, we don't, we don't have a dishwasher real world problems and so I just don't want to cook a whole lot and it just kind of saved us time so we started using a meal prep company called Clean Eats. I actually used to work for the company back in Charleston, South Carolina um, but a local supplement store actually does supply them here in Greenwood area. Um, it's called Alpha Fitness Supplements. So we do go there and we buy about 10 to 12 meals per week so that we can um, have our lunches and dinners prepared as well too for tracking. Um, for the remainder of my meals, I did try to have, you know, again, my sonic blast, but also incorporate fruits, veggies, and lean meats into my other meals and snacks throughout the day. Some symptoms that I experienced are the um, swelling in my feet. My shoes started stretching out a lot more. Um, they came a lot tighter. I had to switch my gym shoes up because my standard gym shoes were way too tight. I had to loosen on my shoestrings. Um, my calves and my legs were swelling up a little bit. And then I also had to replace my wedding ring because it was just getting really, really tight on my finger. So I did get rid of that as well too. Again, um, I did switch to more maternity style clothing because my pants were no longer fitting me. Um, that was a thing that I did experience. And then also some of my jackets, my belly would kind of like show, so it'd have like a mid, mid belly um, showing through on my clothes, but I, I rocked it anyways. Um, I didn't have any major cravings besides a uh, plate of nachos. I really wanted loaded nachos one day. So we went to, it was a Sunday, we went to three different Mexican restaurants to find loaded nachos. Two of them were closed and then we finally went to a third restaurant and they were open so I did get my nacho craving fix. So that was the only kind of major thing that I had. Um, I could eat meat again. Um, again, continued coffee, my supplements, all that fun stuff. So that was great to have back in my life. I had to plug my camera and it died, sorry. <laughs> Um, so some symptoms that I experienced, you know, I kind of found myself more out of breath, um, when I was like walking a whole lot or talking, if I got myself kind of worked up, I noticed that I was just kind of like breathing a little bit heavier. She began to be a lot more active. So if the days that I didn't work out, I kind of noticed her moving and grooving a little bit more. So I was like, oh, you get your morning workout in. It's kind of cute um, to kind of feel her move and kick. So I didn't really ever do like kick counts um, because I just kind of felt her move sporadically throughout the entire day. So I didn't really kind of worry about that. Um, definitely my anxiety went down um, in the second and third trimester just because that first trimester it was, 
you know, kind of scary of waiting and seeing, you know, is this baby going to make it? So, um, I did, you know, give myself some grace as far as sleep. Um, some nights I wanted to go to bed at 8.30. So I went to bed at 8.30 and I kind of just cut myself some slack because I would get up at um, 6 or 5 30 6 a.m. to go to the gym so I, I knew I was just kind of tired in general um, but whenever we could go on walks if I kind of like picked up the pace on my walks kind of closer towards the end of the trimester I experienced what was lightning crotch um, is a symptom of putting the pressure in your um, pelvic area which kind of sends like lightning strikes um, up there so that is a symptom um, I did experience that at the gym as well too with some um, split legged movements so I did stop doing like lunges or um, anything that's like more high impact jumping things like that um, because it just it was just kind of uncomfortable so I did not do that um, I then decided to take a bath because um, I was prolonged into my pregnancy, so it kind of helps relax you. So I did take a bath as well. Um, it was super, super nice to do that. I, I missed my baths. Um, I also continued to, um, you know, not see any stretch marks. Um, again, still taking all of the supplements as well. Um, I did have that varicose vein that still stayed there as well too. Um, and also the linea nigra vein that runs from the belly button like down straight to the middle of your stomach. Um, that was now super, super noticeable as well too. So that is something that um, I did have and that I do still have post baby as well. Um, so I was going to the doctor on a weekly basis now, um, starting at my last month. So the doctor checked me and if you get checked, ho, ho, it's a little painful. Um, so my cervix was all the way back towards my tailbone and I was one centimeter dilated. So, um, I stayed one centimeter dilated the entire month. Um, my cervix was still in the back nothing changed so um starting kind of like week 38 i tried everything like pineapple juice dates um red raspberry leaf tea bouncing on a ball stretching baths um we pretty much did kind of the main things to kind of help self-induce labor but this girl was not coming out which um can be common for those, especially during a first pregnancy, that you know you can go past term. However, with what was going on in our life, um, it was best that we kind of discussed a induction. So that is what the doctor and I discussed. So we did schedule an induction for her due date. Um, since there weren't any classes because of COVID, we didn't go anywhere. I did start and find a YouTube channel. Um, her name is Bridget Tyler. She is a birth doula in the San Francisco Bay Area and I fell in love with her videos. Um, if you're a mama who is anxious, who is nervous, who is looking for, um, you know, just some extra guidance and support on all things, pregnancy, birth, post baby, breastfeeding, whatever it is, she's got a video on it and it is fantastic. So I highly suggest you check her out because she helped me um, during the process of gearing up towards labor if you do have any anxieties or fears about that as well too. Um, so I will do a birth video as well. So kind of stay tuned for that to kind of hear my birth story as well. Um, again, nothing else crazy. That skin tag from um, trimester one went away. That was the only thing. Um, I had some acne as well too, but with wearing a mask, like you get acne as well. So that was just kind of like, eh, is it COVID? Is it? pregnancy i'm not so sure um you know wearing a mask is it covid because you have to wear a mask and breathing and makeup and all that stuff um causes that so that was pretty much it my nails were good my hair grew um that was kind of a plus from pregnancy as well too um so you know my pregnancy may seem like it's kind of on the boring side 
but that was it's my it's my pregnancy journey um it's you know me sharing with you what i did um i lowered my weights in the gym i didn't pick up anything that was crazy heavy i made sure to watch my form to make sure that i didn't feel too exhausted and just trying to keep myself as healthy as possible and my body moving during this pregnancy because i wanted to make sure that i was you know doing everything that i can to keep me healthy and also my baby healthy and my body as well too um, I also practice a lot of core engagement, um, so making sure you're kind of hugging the baby, doing Kegel exercises. It was super important as well too during pregnancy to make sure that you're doing that as well. Um, again, I'm going to be making a separate video for my birth story. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was kind of informative for you. Um, I hope that you know gives you some hope, gives you some different ideas and suggestions on your pregnancy and kind of what I experienced during mine here as well. So um, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you. We'll chat soon in the next video.